Alright, what is going on guys? HC Jam is here back with another YouTube video. God damn. <clears throat> okay, my voice is a bit hoarse today, so you're gonna have to bear with me. Yeah, HC Jam is here, is back with another video, and it's gonna be part five to the impromptu Mika guide. Uh, I'm claiming this to be the last part because I, I feel I've gone over most things that people need to know about the character, and today's topic is one thing I definitely haven't covered. Um, I kind of sat down and thought what should I cover for the last thing and today we're going to be talking about uh, defensive options uh, for Rainbow Mika. Uh, some of them are universal and some of them are specific to her but hey we will get on to that. But I just want to say uh, much love and shout outs to all the subscribers and anyone who's watched these videos uh, for all the support that you've been giving me recently for these videos and all the messages I get regarding these videos because they seem to be helping quite a few people. Um, I didn't expect them to help this many people but hey if I can help then that's a plus for me and that's a plus for everyone in the Mika community as well as people trying to figure out how to play or learn to fight against uh, Rainbow Mika and like I said I'm not the best Rainbow Mika player but I'm, I'm definitely not the worst so uh, my insight could be invaluable to some people or it could be a bunch of gibberish there so much love for the support but we're going to be moving on to the more intricate things or should I say intricate defensive options with uh, Rainbow Mika today so I'm gonna put all the as usual I'm gonna put all the uh, necessary video links in the description below so part one through to four of the impromptu guide uh, they'll be in the description below um, any video or any topics I go over today and I've already done a video in the past I'll leave those links in the description as well and people can go check them out well feel free to check them out you don't have to I'm not forcing you um, no cohesion here or cohesion uh, I need to learn how to pronounce that word properly. But anyway, let's jump on to um, what we're going to be going over today. So like I said, we're going to go um, going over Mika's defensive options uh, in Street Fighter V. And defense is a bit sporadic and a bit unorthodox in Street Fighter V uh, for a lot of uh, fighting game players. But I, I feel people are getting accustomed to it now. But I'm going to put the topics up on screen. And we're gonna, like we always do, we're going to sub them or categorize them into parts. We're going to enumerate them first. And then we're going to go over each section one by one. So first up on screen, we're going to see, we're going to be talking about Mika's Crouch Light Punch. Remember, we're going to be talking about this in defensive terms. Or I'm going to try and explain and illustrate uh, where I would use them or where Mika players would use them defensively. Uh, it's pretty standard, but it still doesn't hurt to show people how it works. So that's going to be Crouching Light Punch. And the next one uh, is going to be EX Shooting Peach. We have gone over the, the utility behind this move, and I've uploaded quite a bit regarding this move. But hey, we're going to slap it up into one video. I know in a previous video I didn't showcase an example, but I'm, I'm definitely going to do it here. Oh, I'd have to do it here because I forgot to do it last time. Uh, silly stupid jammers. Uh, we're going to be going over Mika's V reversal as well. This is a universal mechanic, a universal defensive mechanic, uh, but we're just going to show what happens uh, regarding Mika's one. And it's going to be an interesting one uh, for, for those of you who don't know how it worked in season one as opposed to how it works in season two. Um, I think I'm going to go over backdash as well. Yeah, I'll go over backdash. It shouldn't take long, but I'll, I'll go over backdash as well uh, like I said this is another universal thing that people have kind of been I want to say forced um, well they have no choice in certain situations but to backdash now especially on wake up but we will cover backdash and hopefully that won't take too long don't want to elongate this video as I've done the previous ones but hey we can't help it sometimes and we're gonna be the last thing we're gonna do um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now because literally I'm turning on the microphone turning the recording and we're gonna talk about uh, whatever comes to my head but I'm just gonna list other things here like just the other defensive things that I've noticed in the game uh, can't come nothing specific comes to mind right now but I'm pretty sure throughout the video we will go over and we'll find something something will pop up into my head I have an epiphany or something and we we'll go oh yeah let's cover this real quick so yeah that's gonna be the topics and you know as first first and foremost we are gonna be talking about crouch light punch which is this move here Mika's crouch light punch so the move is three frames three frames of start up uh, it can co be comboed into itself as you can see there but we've already seen that before um, well I think you've seen that all the time before but we're gonna be using it in a defensive manner so I'm just gonna I'm gonna show a basic thing first again this is something I've shown in the past but it doesn't hurt to show 
this once again. Uh, I'm going to put first attack only. I'm going to guard recovery. So, as usual, um, you know, when, you wanna, when you're on defense, the first thing you think is like, oh, okay, I'm going to block, which obviously you hold back away from your opponent to block and so on and so forth. You get the idea. That's a, that's a basic defensive option, but to where to use uh, this button or where Ma Mika's will try to use this button is to interrupt strings. Uh, frame tight ones you shouldn't try to interrupt. Uh, they'll probably try to interrupt staggered strings of this button. Uh, this the button is special cancelable as well, um, right there. Obviously that's punishable, but don't do that. Um, it's also as well. Uh, it's a, it's one of Mika's only defensive wake up options. You're going to be seeing it quite a bit. So I've put the CPU to do crouch light punch uh, on block, and this is an area where not to do it. So. I've gone over frame traps and 50-50s and stuff before, but we're going to reiterate the point again. Um, so when you're on defense, if you're going up against strong players, the one thing you don't want to do or you want to be wary of is they're going to be frame tight. And if they are frame tight, ooh, drop the combo there. If they are frame tight, then you're going to get combos for trying to interrupt a string that you shouldn't be pressing buttons towards. Because I don't stand light punch there. That's plus two on block. And stand medium punch is five frame startup. But when it's when it's been done straight after a stand light punch, it becomes three frames to start up. So therefore, and the normal priority system kicks in. So therefore, the stand medium punch will beat the defensive option from Mika. That's one area you do not want to do it in. But you you have to literally uh, look how your or pay attention to how your opponent's playing. Are they staggering their strings or are they pressing buttons? If I was to do something like you know maybe stand light punch stagger stand light punch, I'm, I'm trying to do that now. Let me let me turn this off. Right? So if I was to do something like this, right? Maybe do a delayed stand medium punch. Just delay it there, and then try and get a combo. That that is where the um, that's where the crouch light punch will work because I put it on reversal timing. Oh, that's one thing I should remember when you're recording guard recovery options in the game. Uh, make sure you get them to reversal timing. Uh, remember, when you're recording guard recovery options in the game to try and find out uh, defensive tools or anything that works on block, make sure you get any move you're recording to come out on reversal timing. So yeah, as you saw before, I was trying to do staggered strings or staggered something, and as you can see, it's not working because the CPU is playing to reversal timing. So if you see your opponent trying to do staggered strings, which basically staggered strings are, you don't you try to play to their timing sort of thing. Obviously, that's not what staggered means, but you kind of delay your string. So you don't play frame perfect. You don't play frame tight. You try to match their timing because a lot of people like to do things on defense delayed. And uh, you want to try and catch their timing and definitely get the damage or maximize the damage you can get off of any opportunity. But since the CPU, I've got to do reversal timing. Staggered strings will not work. So definitely be careful of using crouch light punch. Um... In when your opponent's pressuring you, uh, obviously there's better characters to do it, but I picked Mika here or the Mika Mirror anyway. And as you can see, it's just being blown up right now because I'm doing the standard frame tight string with uh, Rainbow Mika, which is stand light punch, stand beating punch. And obviously, we said before in the 50 50 video, you could do stand light punch, brimstone, and you'll beat that out as well. So, yeah, that's one place not to do it. So, I just wanted to get that over and done with and clear that up. Um, so, I'm going to record something real quick. Let's turn the guard off. And I want to record. Let's see what I want to record. Uh, let's try this. Dash up fierce. Let's try that. This is a random thing. No Mika player will do this. But I just want to go over this and explain it anyway. So one place you'll see Mika's do. One place you'll see Mika's do uh, crouch light punch is on wake up. Because like I said on wake up. Well, let me turn that off. Yeah, on wake up, uh, this is uh, this is not in terms of playing fighting games. A wake up button uh, in some games it can be a legitimate wake up option. In other games, it's not. Street Fighter, Street Fighter Five, uh, you kind of you kind of want to condemn it. So it's like, oh, I don't, I don't really agree with people doing it, sort of thing. Or I wouldn't recommend doing it because people's meaty setups should be perfect and on point right now. But for a lot of the cast, since they don't have an invincible reversal, uh, this is one of the only options they have and it's been kind of considered as a legitimate option because they have no reversal i know i just kind of repeated the words and rearranged them but that's basically that's basically the point um so when you'll see mika's do wake up jab or wake up crouch light punch like i said it's three frames start up um the time they'll do it 
is there will normal recovery on wake up and then they'll try and get a can of hit confirm into uh shooting peach so i'm gonna do it again so i'm gonna get knocked down i'm gonna wake up normal recovery and then i'm just gonna go for a can of hit confirm shooting peach let me show you the can of hit combo anyway uh let's do yeah, this is the counter hit combo they'd like to go for. So one, two, three, four. So that's it. Crouch jab, stand medium punch, stand fierce into heavy shooting peach. Now, if I was to turn the CPU back on to do the recording, if I went to do a back recovery, that wouldn't work because we can't get we can't capitalize on waking up defensively. We can't capitalize on it. Let's see. Yeah, see, as you can see, it's not working. When I back recover and wake up jab, I'm not, I'm not getting my counter hit. So this is why, when you see Mika's on defense, you'll see them do normal recovery into crouch, uh, crouch light punch into stand medium punch because they want to get that quick, easy counter hit confirmed. Right there, see, easy as pie. We can't do that on back recovery. That's why when you see Mika's normal recovery, chances are you're gonna see them wake up, or they will wake up with a crouching. Uh, light punch to get a, a sneaky counter hit confirm so you definitely want to be uh, attentive towards that and obviously if I'm gonna change over to the attacking role I'm gonna get the CPU to do a normal recovery crouch light punch when wake up and then I got my meaty on deck ready so you definitely have to be ready get your meaty Get your normal recovery uh, meaty setup ready when you're going up against Mika's because when you see the normal recovery, they're going to try and do wake up jab. Period. It's simple as that. Um, because this is one of Mika's legitimate defensive options and if you know how to properly punish it and exploit that weakness, then you shouldn't have much trouble when Mika's knocked down. Because remember, she hasn't got an invincible reversal outside of Peach Assault, her critical art, so you definitely want to... You want to abuse that fact. So if they back recover, uh, it won't be so bad. If you miss your timing, all they can do is jab. And what? Uh, crouch jab does 20 damage. That is minor. That is an iota amount of damage. So you don't really have to start crying and say, Oh, Mika can back recover and do this. And I can't do that. So it's not that bad. So yeah, crouching light punch. Uh, it's going to be used on wake up and especially um, when Mika players normal recover because remember there's three different wake up timings delayed wake up uh, normal recovery wake up and back recovery wake up it's definitely be wary of that so yeah there's not many there's not many areas you'd use this or where Mika just uses anyway like I said it's going to be used to staggered strings or to uh, on wake up normal recovery I'll probably put that on screen right now for you guys to see so you know just going over what we spoke about here with crouch light punch it's got it's limited on defense um but it, it can be used as one of mika's legitimate options uh the places you will see it used um is if the opponent does a, a non frame perfect string so kind of like a, a a fake string something that's illegitimate no we'll call it an illegitimate string it took me a while to find the words to come out of my mouth and of course the other area they'll use it is on wake up and um, it's specifically for normal recovery that's where you're going to see it um you don't want to see or uh, if mika players uh when you want to use this button on defense when you're blocking do not press this button against people who use frame perfect strings and i obviously showed that example uh before there at the start which it probably was just me going on the tangent anyway because it sounds like that but yeah that's going to be covering the crouch light punch uh defensive option there like i said it's limited but heck uh, it's what we got to work with and it's how uh, each player utilizes it to the best of its ability that makes it uh such a tedious not even sorry not tedious such an annoying button and definitely a problematic one for certain people because three frame buttons are pretty good in this game uh, having one is pretty important anyway it's a, uh, it's imperative that you have one if you want to progress further in tournaments but hey we've seen tournament winners with four frame buttons so hey shout outs to bonchan and shout outs to nash all right so that's going to cover crouch light punch and now we are going to be moving on to ex shooting peach so i'm going to change characters and i'm going to stick with the stage suzaku castle so guys Give me a couple minutes and we will move on to the next section. All right, guys, we are going to be moving on to the next section here. Let me just, yeah, okay, that's all good. My stick is working. Yeah, we're going to move on to the next section here. We're talking about, or we're going to be talking about using 
EX Shooting Peach in a defensive manner because like I said this video is based on uh, looking at Mika's tool set but more specifically the defensive one and how Mika can kind of alleviate pressure, uh, pressure, alleviate pressure and kind of uh, mitigate some sort of you know offensive onslaught from certain characters and I've picked Nikali because I feel uh, using EX Shooting Peach against him uh, in terms of certain situations is a good idea uh, so we're gonna get cracking on with that so the first thing uh, let me make sure I've got Mika blocking yes I do okay she's got EX Shooting Peach on the guard recovery action so that's good to know like I said um, before blocking is the primary you know defensive maneuver in this game well, not even defensive maneuver it's just a defensive thing to do holding back on your stick or your pad whatever your respective peripheral is and um, it's from there you got to decide what you want to do to kind of break out of defense and change that defense into you know an offensive move sort of thing now uh, I spoke about how to utilize EX Shooting Peach before but I didn't I don't think I illustrated this example in the video I spoke about so we're gonna do it here so um, let me I've got to take it off first I should take it off okay right let me take it off so when are you using this example uh, with Nikali this is gonna be a very basic string that he does so you're gonna do stand medium kick uh, crouch medium punch I've done a video on this as well I'll leave it in the description so you guys can check it out but we're gonna talk about it here a little bit more so this is a basic string that Nikali does and it is a frame trap um, stand medium kick is a five frame startup and plus two and block and I believe crouch medium punch is five frame startup and it's I think it's plus on block I'll have to check what the numbers are specifically but you will see Nikali's uh, do this quite a bit obviously the top level high level to top level Nikali's they won't do this all the time they'll kind of stagger it just like I was talking about before they'll stagger it uh, they'll probably do it frame perfect it depends on the type of player they're up against but you will see this string quite a bit now what Mika can do against this string is she can do and I'm gonna turn it back on she can do EX Peach so as you can see EX Peach is blowing through it's absorbing the crouch medium punch and it is hitting <coughs> sorry it's hitting the Kali and I get 130 damage for that give me one second <coughs> damn my voice is killing me but yeah you can see that it's, it's blowing through the armor and the only reason this is working is because there's a three frame gap in this uh, this block string that Nikali is doing so it's not a true string and having true block strings in this game it's it's seldom seen but it's actually pretty good and but they're not attached to strong buttons uh, if that makes sense I might have came out like a bunch of gibberish but there's there's barely any true strings in this game and they're not really to do with like mediums and heavies you kind of have to create a true string um, but yeah EX shooting peach uh, the armor on it activates on the third frame and I, I believe it's the armor is activated from frames three through to nine so therefore if you're going up against characters that do a string that has a three frame gap um, you can blow through it however the the detriment to this you know the downside to this is if you do that then Nikali can get a full punish I can't get a full watch from Nikali can so if you showcase this to your opponent and they know that the next time they're gonna block the shooting peach and they're gonna get a big punish when I can get this big punish there we go there we go so that does 238 damage because it shooting peach is minus 10 on block so it's not an invincible reversal it is a reversal move because it's got armor on it and obviously it follows the rule of most the majority of armored moves in this game they activate from the third frame onwards um, so it can be used in specific situations and I've showed you a basic one there as well as another one specific to Nikali if you see Nikali do you know crouch medium punch into medium valiant rebellion that's not a true string either so Mika can blow through that anything that's got a three frame gap or bigger EX Peach can blow through it and it, obviously it costs one bar you get 130 damage unfortunately Mika doesn't get Oki off of EX shooting Peach she did in season one but it doesn't work this time around so it's definitely uh, you've got to take note of that and find out where you can use it but I did say the downside to it as well um, you can use let's take that off and uh, let's use I think it is this one I think it's this one let's take off guard all as well you can use uh, EX shooting peach on wake up as well it's not 
advised. It's ill-advised. It's something we don't recommend doing, but it can happen in certain scenarios. Depends on the type of player you're fighting and depends on what setup your opponent's going to do, whether it's legit or not. But if I do a forward throw, yeah, okay. So if I do a forward throw with Nikali and try and do crouch medium punch, again, you see the EX Peach blowing through that there. You see it blowing through it, I get the 130 damage, so on and so forth. Because if I was to do this exact same setup, but I was to, I think it's this one. If I was to do a wake up a button with Mika, yeah, it's going to get kind of hit. So, one thing you want to remember as well with Rainbow Mika is, for certain situations, I'll put this up when we summarize this. For certain situations, uh, if, if, crouch, if Crouch Light Punch get beaten in the scenario, EX Shooting Peach will probably work. Uh, but it, again, it depends on the type of player you're fighting. Um, but it's good that we showed or we showcased Nakali uh, because he has interesting examples that EX Peach can blow through. Uh, like I said, I have done a video on using EX Shooting Peach against frame traps or interrupting strings, and I showed a couple of examples, or I used Nakali as the example there. So I'll leave the video link in the description below. So you definitely want to pay attention towards that. And remember, EX Shooting Peach's 5 frame startup, it's very good for punishing moves, um, but we've, we've shown it how it's used uh, defensively. Um, so yeah, I believe that might cover that. Is there anywhere else you could, could use it as well? Um, no, it's only it on wake up and to interrupt strings. So yeah, we'll put it, you know, we'll put it in a more sophisticated manner um, on the screen right now. So utilizing uh, EX Shooting Peach defensively, um, you can use it to interrupt non-true uh, non strings, uh, forward slash frame traps, anything with a three frame gap or bigger, you can use it there, and you can um, you can blow through the second move coming out, and you can get the 130 damage you deserve. You can also use it on wake up, but this is in specific scenarios. Um, it's limited. It depends what your opponent does. Oh, so yeah, that that's gonna be something just popped into my head, but that's gonna be that. Let me show you this real quickly. Um, let's go guard recovery options again. So if I was to do. If I was to do medium, yes. If I was to do medium into a light, because there's not a three frame gap, it doesn't work. So therefore, you can get blown up. Me can get me can get punished for this, and then the Kali can do a big ass combo. So just so just remember that. And that's because um, I'm doing a three frame button after the stand medium kick, which is plus two and block. So therefore, doing stand light punch will become a one frame button. So that will make uh, EX shooting Peach irrelevant, and then I, that results in a counter hit for me. So yeah, just wanted to show that quickly, although I just put the, the editing part uh, as to what we went over. So yeah, just want to remember that, or you guys want to remember that as well. Take copious notes, because hopefully this will help everybody out. But yeah, so we've gone over Crouching Light Punch. Uh, we've gone over EX Shooting Peach. I'm kind of whizzing through these. At the same time, it sounds like a bunch of gibberish is coming out of my mouth, not making any sense. But hopefully the notes on screen will make sense. But yeah, we're going to be, we're going to close out the section two there of EX Shooting Peach. Remember, like I said, I'm going to keep reciting these lines. Defensive options that Mika has are limited and I can only show you the way that I would use them. Um, so yeah, definitely be attentive towards that. And th these are, these are just the primary ways you want to use them. There's more intricate and situational things you can use them for, but these are the ones I definitely want to um, stress. Uh, that people uh, uh, implore people to use and they look into a little bit more in their training with Rainbow Mika. But yeah, we're going to move on to section three now, which is going to be covering her V reversal. So again, I'm going to switch characters and let's go ahead and move on to section three. All right, guys, we are back and we're going to be moving on to section three, talking about Mika's V reversal. All right, so I've got my stick working because I have to keep, uh, sometimes I have to unplug it and put it back in because the button stops working or whatever, but I'll get that sorted soon. But yeah, let's talk about Mika's V reversal. So yeah, V reversals, they require V meter, the red gauge above the blue gauge on the bottom left side and the bottom right side of the screen. I talked about how uh, V meter is built in my previous video, so if you want to go check that out, you can. So we're going to be jumping into the V reversal. This is a universal mechanic, so everybody has V reversals, they all have dis uh, different animations, uh, they all have different start up times, and they all have you know different recovery frames, yada yada yada. All the scientifics, all the results are different. They're, most of them are not the same. Um, I hopefully I said that right. 
but yeah Mika's one in season one it used to be the best view reversal in the game because it was an animation and Mika used to get a setup from it however unfortunately that does that is not the case in season two it's been significantly toned down and easier to deal with because the vast majority no I think all the view reversals uh, for the season one characters going into season two, they all got an increase in start, means they come out slower, which that was evidently a bad thing. But um, oh, one thing you also have to remember as well is V reversals are susceptible to throws. Um, they're strike invincible, um, but they're not a throw invincible. I think that's correct. Don't quote me on that. I do remember something. All right, so I've got yeah, okay. So I've got Akuma to do his view reversal, but I'm gonna do my view reversal back because I need to use it as an example. So in season one, I could view reversal like this, and then Mika could dash up, and she can get a meaty throw, or she could she could get a meaty button. Yeah, she can get a meaty button. Uh, yeah, she can get a meaty button. However, that is not the case in season two. Let's check if this is the right one, because we've got to watch the animation the whole way through. Okay, lovely. Right, so, however, that's not the case in Season 2. Uh, Mika can still dash after her view reversal, however, she cannot press a button, because when I do that, if I dash and try to press a button now, I get, or oh, Akuma gets a cannon hit. So, therefore, you can dash in if you want, but you're going to dash in and you're going to you're gonna do the opponent a tremendous favor so when using v reversal it takes one bar and like i said it's a universal mechanic and this is how mika uses the thing um if the v reversal hits and you get the animation that's that's good but it's good for uh it's good for the opponent it's not so much as good for you because of how it worked in season one but what you want to think about, or when you're V-reversing with Rainbow Mika, which a lot of people should V-reverse a little bit more, you got to think of V-reversal as a kind of re reset and restart situation. So if you're in, if you're in a predicament, maybe, uh, let's get, uh, let's try and get Akuma to do, yeah, let's do Crouch Fit, oh, no, maybe not that. Uh, let's record that again. I didn't want forward hard punch. Right, let's, let, let's just do that, let's do that. Okay, so say Akuma's pressuring you or some jazz like that, and you're in trouble. You want a V-reversal, and you want to think of it as, right, I've reset or I've reset the situation, let's go back and let's go back and restart. Let's think about how we're going to approach this guy again. That's what it is. Get the animation, and look at the distance that's created between you two. And that's pretty good. So you definitely want to look out towards that. Um, so like I said, when you V-reversal with Mika, think of it as a reset, restart. And it's a hard knockdown, but there are some things you can do. Um, you've probably seen this before. Let me take the wake up off. I actually don't know if Akuma. If I've, I don't know if I've given him a back dash. Uh, I need to double check. This is gonna. This might take a while. Okay, I have given him a back dash. That's good. Okay, so let's put that on. So some things you may have seen happen when Mika V reversals is this. So the V reversal, and this is a hard read, this is not legit. So the opponent will backdash, <clears throat> Mika will jump in, uh, she'll do a jumping hard kick to kind of punish the backdash, and then get a full combo. That's kind of turning a uh, defensive maneuver into, you know, a sort of an attacking thing. Um, it, it, it's not legit. That's all I'm going to say. It's not legit. The opponent can punish it. If they're ready for it, they'll deal with it accordingly. Um, however... You know, it's a hard read, so I wouldn't recommend doing it all the time. Like I said, it depends on the player you're fighting. So that's turning a defensive situation into an offensive one, uh, one that is conducive to Rainbow Mika. Um, because what why opponents backdash is so that they don't get this happening to them. So if you wanted to dash up and grab, it wouldn't work. Because that, that kind of wouldn't have worked in Season 1, but it doesn't work in this season. So you don't want to do that. And hopefully, if I dash up button... Okay, the dash up thing still works if they back dash, but they can be people can react to the dash, and people are starting to react to the dash um, in this version of the game because <coughs> it's been out for a while now. Sorry, my voice is still a bit hoarse, so you're gonna have to bear with me. Um, also, what I want to do is I'm gonna record. Yeah, I'm gonna record Akuma doing a jab, and then I'm gonna block. Right. So what people forget about. Mika's view reversal or view reversaling in general is 
When you view reversal, Mika's is actually pretty good in terms of uh, view reversaling and the opponent blocking because the pushback it generates is pretty good. Like, look at that. That's decent pushback. Well, I, I wasn't hanging around there long enough. Okay, let me do this instead. This will be easier. All right, and then we're going to block for a little bit. All right, that should do the trick. All right, I shouldn't be able to view reverse this button, but... Right, there you go. So you're blocked. That's pretty decent pushback on a view reversal. So what people tend to forget is people want the view reversal to hit. I want it to hit as well, but we can't all have what we want. Or we can't all want what we... Bloody hell, tongue's twisted. We can't all have what we want in life. That's what I wanted to say. But however, if you get people to view reversal, or you get Mika to view reversal, and, you know, the pushback is so good that you can actually walk back, or even better, you can backdash, generate some space for yourself, backdash, kind of uh, calm things down, reassess situation and go back in. So view reversaling and the opponent blocking it is not so bad. It really isn't so bad. So definitely want to take that into consideration there. Uh, Mika's view reversal is still a good tool. It's not as good as it was in season one. That's what Mika players are crying about, but it's still something useful. Um, you definitely got, um, when you want to utilize view reversal in matchups, uh, let me get my head straight for a second. Thank you. All right. Uh, when you want to view reversal in matchups, you got to, what I tend to do is, I'm going to talk about this in another video uh, soon, but you want to look for view reversal spots, spots where you're guaranteed for the view reversal to hit, so you can kind of, like I said, uh, reset and restart the neutral or reset the round, kind of recollect your thoughts and approach your opponent in a more a calming manner instead of, you know, being flustered and trying to rush in and doing some very, or making some impetuous decisions there. Um, is there anything else to talk about regarding V reversals? No, I think I think I've gone over it. I'd say the one thing you've got to be wary of is I'll say one more thing before we do it. Uh, let me set Akuma's wake up to stand jab. What you might see a lot of people, Mika players do is when they get the V reversal, they'll kind of do a slight walk forward and then do a stand medium kick. That's to stop. Um, but that's not even to stop, that's kind of to anticipate if the opponent's pressing a button because they're trying to anticipate a dash from you. So basically, to summarize this up, or we'll summarize it when we're talking about the thing on the screen, and that's going to cover the uh, the V reversal aspect there. Right, so yeah, let's go over what we talked about, uh, we've spoken about on uh, Mika's regarding Mika's view reversal. Sorry, my brain fired there. So I couldn't think. So yeah, um, everything that happens after Mika's view reversal is technically a hard read. Um, so therefore, Mika doesn't get a legitimate setup from a view reversal. Um, so definitely want to take into consideration of that because season one she could get it set up, season two she cannot. Think of the view reversal as, like I said, a reset and restart the situation. Go back to neutral and collect your thoughts and try to go back in a more smart and sophisticated manner in terms of approaching your opponent. Um, also, uh, what else did we mention as well? The pushback, oh, whether it, whether the view reversal hits or it's blocked, the pushback or the, the space that's generated is still pretty decent for Rainbow Mika. Definitely want to consider that as well. And also when looking into matchups, you know, character to character, whatever, look for V reversal spots. I will go over this topic again in a future video. Also, Mika's V reversal costs one bar, but that is a universal thing, but we'll just leave it there anyway, because she's got a two bar V trigger, so she can use V reversal uh, a little bit more, she can use it more liberally than other characters as Akuma, because Akuma's got three bars as opposed to two. Um, so yeah, that's going to cover the V reversal topic there. Like I said, we're, we're whizzing through this. I feel like I have to speak a lot about these things, but like I said, they're limited. This is all Mika has. Um, and this is what a lot of characters have actually. So, but we'll summarize all the options again and showcase them one more time at the end of the video. But yeah, that's gonna cover V reversal. So hopefully that's made sense. Uh, hopefully this video is making sense because in my head it is not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let us move on to the next section which is going to be backdashing um, and there's not much I know about this but I'm going to try and cover it as best as I can anyway so yeah let me go and change the characters and we will be back with you shortly so let's move on 
All right, folks, we're back and we're going to be moving on to section four of the defensive options for Rainbow Mika in this impromptu guide part five. And this option we're going to be talking about now is another universal one, just like V reversals. It's going to be backdashing. Yes, this lovely thing that you may know uh, or players, certain players are infamous for. Shout out to Luffy, one of the best players in Europe, one of the kings of Europe. Uh, so, yeah, backdashing's there, not the forward dashing. It'll be backdashing here. Um, you could use this in Season 1 uh, a little bit, but people didn't because those, uh, defensive options are a little bit more open. They're not as sparse as they are in Season 2. But now that it's been, uh, the, the defensive options have been reduced, people have had kind of had no choice. They've been forced to backdash because we need to see more backdashes in this game. But they're not. Uh, to go straight into it, backdashes are not invincible like they were in Street Fighter 4 and other fighting games. I know they're invincible in Guilty Gear. Uh, I'm not sure what else. Backdashes can be invincible on wake up, and this was a legitimate thing to do in the past. However, that is not the case in uh, Street Fighter 5. Now, hopefully, I have got Rainbow Mika to do a backdash. If not, I'm going to just record it now and get it to do reversal timing. This is what I mean by doing recordings, get things to come out reversal timing. So let's double check. Oh well, that was rude. That was that was absolutely rude. Okay. Let's double check she's got the backdash. Yes, she does. Okay, so what you have to know about backdashes in uh, Street Fighter V is they are throw invincible on around the startup frames. I'm not sure if it's on startup frames. I'd have to double check. Don't quote me on that. But they are not. Uh, they're not strike invincible or like you know they're not fully invincible. So if I was to do a sweep and then go for a throw, the throw would whiff. Um, let me try and get, actually, let me do a better scenario for you. Right, so if I was to do a brimstone, and then dash up brimstone, can't get in there. So that's that means that you can avoid throws just around the start time. So you, I think you can, yeah, you can avoid meaty throws for sure if you back dash. Um, so there's that. And then even if I do uh, a regular throw, and this is meaty timing, Mika's, the opposing Mika is going to avoid it. However, if I do a, you know, if I do a, a button, it's not fully invincible, so they get clipped by the button. My follow-ups are limited, but they, you know, the meek is getting clipped by the button. Uh, when I get it right, right. So yeah, just so just so you know that part. Then backmashes are not fully invincible. However, this is going to be more intricate about uh, backdashes, I believe. If I'm correct, I remember Sian said this in a video once, and I, I did get confirmation one from one of our top players in the UK. Uh, when you backdash, you are airborne on the third frame. So, you know, going back to what we talked about, you know, about EX shooting Peach, the armor activating on the third frame. Wow, I got disconnected from the server. How about that? All right, guys, give me a couple minutes. Let me sort this out. All right, sorry about that, guys. The servers for Street Fighter 5 have been absolute poo-poo in the last couple days. So that's not really good. Uh, let's double. Yeah, okay, it's all good. So yeah, I, before I was rudely interrupted, what I was saying because I got bodied by the game. What I was saying was, when you backdash, um, if my information is correct, uh, you are not airborne until the third frame. So going back to the situation I was talking about, the scenario I was giving you. If I do brimstone, and let's say I wanted to do dash up medium punch. So when I do dash up. Well, after I dash, my frame advantage is plus two, so therefore if I throw a uh, stand medium punch, it will become a three frame button. But as I just said, uh, when opponents, or when you backdash on wake up, you're not airborne until the third frame. So what should happen is the Mika should become airborne. So that's what happens here. Now this can happen in certain situations. It can be a common occurrence. It, it may not be. Um, but this is what happens when a three frame button clashes with a backdash. Uh, you will become airborne on the third frame. And therefore, you kind of mess up your opponent's, I, I, I guess, hit confirming, you know, uh, follow-up situations. Because some people, they might see the hit, and then they go, oh, medium hit, then I'll do a fierce. And then since you're airborne, you can punish uh, their recovery frames on that move with your own move, uh, so on and so forth. But backdashing is a legitimate thing. Let me get the CPU to do it, and I'll, I'll kind of show you what I mean. Uh, this will probably be easy to do. Uh, there we go. And then one, two. Okay, let's just, let's try that. Let's see if this works. And then brimstone. Get up. And then backdash. Okay, so I have to mash fierce basically. Uh, brimstone. 
Okay, so we'll, we'll just mash fierce there. Um, let's try this again. So, so if I backdash, and then we can punish, because the opponent, they've seen a hit. They've visually seen a hit, and they think they can confirm uh, stand medium punch, but sometimes that's not the case. And then you can whiff punish that button there. But do not misconstrue the point. At higher levels of gameplay, if the opponent sees that you're airborne or that they can't get the, the follow-up they've intended to go for, then they will not try and hit confirm that. This will kind of happen at the intermediate levels and lower levels since they're still trying to learn how the game works. So backdashing is legitimate. Um, also as well, you know, you can avoid throws. There is a certain setup that I do where I catch the latter frames of the backdash. So if I went for a crouching throw and went to go for an empty jump, you know, as the throw caught it there, but that's because it's recovering, it, it's catching the latter frames of the back bash. Uh, that's one thing that I do. That's going for an empty jump because usually before, I've done this video before, uh, if I do a regular crouching throw and go for the jump hard punch safe jump, if opponents back dash, they become airborne, so therefore I can't confirm properly. But however, if I know that they're going to back dash, I'll do a jump, they back dash, and then my throw will catch them. So you can't kind of catch this. You can't catch the startup frames of the backdash, but you can definitely catch uh, the kind of recovery frames of it, if that makes sense. I need to definitely learn how to articulate this properly because I've kind of explained it in my own way, not exactly the 100% uh, informative way. So I do apologise about that. But hopefully by these these examples, you get the idea. So if I was to uh, let's get into back cover instead. If I was to go for a throw after a knockdown, the opponent can backdash to avoid a throw. Now, <coughs> sorry, you will most likely see uh, backdashes happening not just against Mika but other grapplers as well. Because remember, Mika, Laura, Zangief, uh, I'd put Birdie in there as well. You know, I, I, heck, I'd even put Abigail in there as well. You know, uh, some of their strongest options are, or two strong options they have are their regular throws and command throws because they can mix up those options because they are, they're grapplers or they have command grabs so they can do that. Nikali can do this as well, um, you know, but I, I'd say Vega as well, but you know, their, their command grabs aren't as fast because they're not, they're not command grab like archetype characters, not grapplers or their character archetypes, but you will see backdashes happen quite a bit in Street Fighter 5 because it, the players have been kind of forced to use it now. Um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, I'd say it's a legitimate option um, for most people. or well, not most people, or some characters. I'd say Colleen and Ed have the best backdash. Mika's backdash is not so great. I believe it is 22 frames. It's 20 to 22. It's definitely not below 20. Um, so I'd have to double check that. I'll put it on the screen when I find out. Um, but yeah. You're going to be seeing it used there. You may see... Oh, let me just double check as well. Actually, uh, let's put them on the left side and let's record. You may see this happen as well. So if Mika's were to go for, you know, the basic reset or whatever in the corner, you may see people, as well as Mika, you can do it here as well. You may see them go for a backdash in the corner just to avoid the throw. And if it's a command throw, this is what's beautiful about, you know, it's an offensive option, but this is what's beautiful about command throws and regular throws. Regular th regular throws recover faster than command throws, so you can kind of see uh, if what your opponent's going to do on defense, if it's neutral jump, backdash. Uh, if you do a command throw, you fully commit to the decision, but if you regular throw, you can recover in time and punish accordingly. So you definitely want to remember that. So, yeah, that's going to be covering uh, the backdash option. Um, like I said, I'm just talking about it universally. There's nothing really specific to do with Mika's one because it's it's not great. Uh, it's not as good as like Kami's, Colleen's, or Ed's, or heck, some, I think Chun Li's is good and Rashid's as well. But you definitely can understand or get to grips with what you can do. So definitely find out where uh, you want to use this. There's not a lot of areas you can use. Like I said, defensive options are limited in this game, uh, even with Rainbow Mika as well. But Definitely be careful and use it sparingly and use it wisely. So yeah, let's go over or let's summarize what we're talking about and put it on screen. So yeah, um, this is going to be just universal information about backdashing. Uh, so it's more, it's more apparent in season two as opposed to season one. Um, I'd have to get the specific information, but backdashing, uh, it's throw invincible for the first 
couple of frame, uh, frames of the animation, not the latter end. So that's why you can avoid throws on startup, or you can avoid meaty throws. That, that's what the backdashes can be used for. They can avoid uh, meaty command throws or meaty regular throws. They're not strike invincible. Just remember that they're not strike invincible. And also remember about backdashes. You, when you backdash, you become airborne on the third frame of uh, your respective backdash. Um, so yeah, hopefully that uh, clarifies that. I don't know why I'm sitting inside the other Mika, but that is really weird. No pun intended. Um, so yeah, we're going to be moving on to the last section, which was just categorized as you know other things. I, enum I enumerated a few things at the start, but we're going to go over this one. It's more like a freestyle sort of thing. This whole video is a freestyle anyway, but we're going to freestyle this last section here. I do have one thing in mind, but let me get it sorted. And guys, do not go anywhere. I'm going to change characters and we'll go on to this final section here. All right, guys, we're back and we're going to be moving on to the final section here, which is pretty much going to be an improvised section going over some other defensive options that I've seen in the game, not just with Mika, with some other characters, but we will dive straight into it here. So, like I said, it's going to be categorized as other things, but the first thing we're going to go over is jumping forward on defense. Now, that's going to sound really bizarre and you're probably questioning yourselves and me thinking, why the hell would anybody jump forward on defense and I'm going to show you an exact reason why uh, and there's limited there's few cats that can do this so Mika can do it uh Zangief Birdie Abigail's got a good one other characters can but they can't make it count but um actually let me take the wake up option first so as we all know I've got Balrog here and we know Balrog's got a throw loop. uh for those of you who don't know a throw loop is basically you just go in the corner and you can basically you can throw and loop it into another throw and that's just that's just giving it a vague term that's a very vague term but when I get this right I don't know why I'm not getting it right Jesus Christ I'm that bad all right let me do this instead this should work okay. I'd have to delay it a little bit right. should have picked the Carly for this this would have been much easier I don't know why it's not working God, am I that bad? There we go. Right, it's hard. All right. Well, it's not hard, but I'm just being an idiot. But basically, a throw loop is when you throw someone in the corner and you can basically set up another meaty throw and you can basically put it on repeat and it's hard to get out of because if the other part of the meaty I do is a button, you definitely can't get out of that. And Barog is the primary example as to why that works. There we go. There we go. And these are meaty throws, by the way. So this is that that's what a throw loop looks like. And you can mix up between a throw or a button. Now, obviously my my really bad execution when recording these videos is bad, so you couldn't see at the start. But one of the options that uh, Mika can do is she can do a jump forward and turn it into a dive bomb. I've got the CPU just to jump forward so you can see it, but if you know if you know of how throw loops work you're gonna try and do this uh not all the time you're gonna try and implement it once or twice in the match see how your opponent reacts but um it can happen and it, it it does leave you wide open because you are jumping and pretty much jumping means free damage for the opponent so if i was barrel going for the throw loop mika jumps forward she avoids the throw loop but however she is prone she's susceptible to being anti-aired by barrel stand medium punch and that's a very good uh, stand medium punch as an anti-air for Balrog so that is one thing that's another defensive option Mika can use this one is more uh, intricate shall we say and it's a situational thing as well because like I said you'll rarely see it it's very uncharacteristic but because Mika's got a dive bomb it can be turned from a defensive maneuver into an attacking option and some people frown upon it and other people go well, okay he had no other choice, so he's got to get out. But remember, you are susceptible between anti-ed. And but if, however, you know Barrel goes for the button, then that jump is irrelevant. Uh, there, yeah. If Barrel goes for that button, the jump is irrelevant. Uh, as you can see there. So there's there's pros and cons to it, but the the cons outweigh the pros uh, and big time. So you definitely got to be wary of that. Um, you can use this against. Balrog, I probably should have used Ken actually as an example, but I always get the examples wrong. Used against Balrog, uh, Ken, Nikali, uh, you definitely got to work on it though, but half the time, 
like I said, the cons outmatch the pros. Uh, the, the pro is, oh, if they go for a throw, you can avoid it, but you, you'll take about 70 damage or so being anti-ed, and you might, you'll probably get put back into another mix-up. But if they go for that button, then you, you're in, uh, in for a world of hurt. Like Taskmaster would say, shouts to Marvel 3 players. Um, but yeah, that's going to be um, regarding jumping forward. It's a very small one, but you can use it there. Uh, I'm going to change characters real quick and show this next one. Uh, but yeah, don't go anywhere, guys. All right, we are back. We're going to show this very last example, and then we're going to close out the video. So this is going to be real quick. But another defensive option you can use on Wake Up is, in actual fact, Mika's V Trigger. I uploaded the video on this a while ago, and then more and more people started to use this. But you're going to see it now. It is Wake Up V Trigger. Wake Up Nadesco. Well, when I get it right. But this is, a, this is just a, a simple example here that I'm using against Laura, going for the meaty elbow. And when I do it, I can get a trade combo. And when I get the connection right, you'll see the, the damage output. Okay. And no, that didn't work. Alright, let's see it again. There we go. So 296 damage. Not too bad, but it cost my entire V trigger. So yeah. This is, I, I, I think I did say it in the Nadesco utility video. If I didn't, I'm going to explain it now. Uh, v triggers, certain V triggers uh, can be used defensively because uh, some of them have, on startup, they have one frame of invincibility. So they can, depending on the meaty setup, they can avoid a certain meaties and they can turn the tides in their favor. I'd say Mika has one of the best ones because obviously it's an assist and Mika can convert into big damage from that. But like I said, it takes up a whole V trigger, uh, V trigger gauge or V gauge. Sorry, um, so it's interesting. I've done a video on this in the past. I'll leave that link in the description below. It still applies to certain things in the game or season 2.5, shall I say? But not everything in that video, uh, the examples will work. But let me just show you it one more time, so you know. So just a basic example from Laura: a Sunset Wheel into a meaty Light Bolt Charge, and then. We go for the, this is a trade combo, but there's some there are some sales where you can make the the meaty whiff, and then you can get a completely uh, a big damaging combo. Heck, you might be able to get like 300 plus damage or something. But yeah, you can use uh, Wake Up Nadesco as a defensive option. So with oh sorry, uh, let's try it one more time. And then we got that, and uh, whatever. Okay, but you get you get the idea. I suck at this stuff, but you get the idea. Okay, so yeah, that's going to close out uh, that section there, and then we're going to close out the video. So let's uh, summarize uh, what we spoke about. Like I said, this was just an improvisation part, and I just remembered a few things off the top of my head. So yeah, jumping forward, um, it, it, it can be an option. It's not, a, it's not a recommended one, but jumping forward, uh, you can use it to avoid uh, throw loops. That's only if the opponent likes to go for throw loops in the corner you gotta test them once or twice if not then you gotta firm that stuff in the corner you gotta hold your defense and you got a whole block which is the primary uh, defensive option in fighting games as a whole and also you can use wake up v trigger uh, wake up nadesco uh, in our case and you can convert that into big damage that's another defensive option but like i said it's a very uh, it's a big risk because people are learning by the day how to avoid and deal with nadesco but if they're committed to a meet setup then they cannot avoid it but that was a basic example uh, there so yeah that's gonna cover uh the video or this part of the impromptu mika guide the final part uh based on defensive options are uh, tailored towards rainbow mika which include universal ones um i do again want to apologize um for my voice the coughing uh, i've had a virus uh influenza for the past couple of days and i'm, I'm just about near recovery but it still doesn't excuse the fact that uh, I was coughing and being a bit disrespectful in the video also I do apologize if my explanations were were not articulated well enough and they sounded a bit of gibberish but hopefully the illustrations can kind of back up uh, what I was saying or hopefully you guys have got open minds and you got right I, I, I see what he means he might have not articulated it well enough but I definitely see what he means um, so I do apologize there so one thing to do before we close out the video is you got to remember about defensive options uh, in Street Fighter 5 is they're limited, but the top players will tell you you've got to you've got to cycle through them, uh, and you've got to make the right decision uh, in terms of 
being on defense or offense decision making is key in street Fighter 5 in general so you know when when you get knocked down you got a mix up between delay wake up normal recovery and back recovery cycle through those options uh depending on what options you have like we said mika's got uh, you know peach assault is an invincible reversal didn't go over that because i've gone over it in another video but mix up your defensive options between uh crouch light punch uh back dash uh, ex shooting peach um, you know, peach assault or wake up B trigger, or maybe even jumping forward. It depends on the situation, and you can find the answer at all. None of these answers outside of peach assault for Mika are foolproof, but even that's not foolproof because people can, uh, if they're not committed to something, they can react and jump because it's not one frame startup, it's three. So you can react to that there. Um, so yeah, just learn to cycle through defensive options and try to be confident on defense. I know this is a high. It's a, it's a volatile game, an extremely volatile game, and there's lots of pressure, and there's just lots of offensive tools, uh, because it, they want to turn it, or this game is uh, tailored towards spectators. People like to enjoy, people get, you know, slaughtered and bodied pretty hard. But if you can kind of keep composed and calm on defense, um, then you should be all right for the most part. Um, but yeah, we've gone over Mika's Crouch Light Punch, EX Shooting Peach, V Reversal, uh, Backdash, and we, you know, we done a little bit of improvisation, included a jump forward uh, defensive option, as well as wake up B trigger. Hopefully they made sense. Hopefully you guys can go in training mode and kind of experiment with this yourself. Heck, you can probably use it as uh, just a base, a foundation, and probably go, look, Jammers, I found something way better than your crappy video. I just want you to check it out. But it's all, it, it's all to help and be beneficial towards the Mika community, as well as anyone that didn't really understand how defensive things work. This is just my perception. It's not the best. But it's definitely not the worst. I want to reiterate that line once again. But yeah, we're going to close out the video there. Um, damn, that's going to be a long editing. I just looked at the time of recording. And that's going to be a long time. So I do apologize about the interruption as well. SF5 just kicked me off the game, which is so rude. But yeah, all the previous parts of the Impromptu Me Guide will be in the description below. This is the final part. Thank you very much for everybody that is tuned in from part one all the way to this final part here. You guys have been troopers and you definitely wanted to learn how Rainbow Mika works or just learn a little bit more about Street Fighter 5. You can find all the necessary uh, social media links. I have Twitter, Twitch, whatever. Um, this will be uploaded real soon. And I've got more content in terms of recording while using my voice and live recording or whatever. They're coming soon. I just have to brainstorm some ideas. But I will be moving on to more. Uh, I'll move on to different things as people have asked me to do different things. But we'll try and mix and match with some things I want to do and some things that people want to see if that makes sense but yeah guys this is gonna be your boy hc jammers and as always i'm gonna watch this video back and edit it if there's anything i've missed i'm gonna put it at the end of the video but guys thank you very much for watching thank you very much for tuning in. this will be in the mika uh, guide playlist and i'm gonna see you on the next video whenever that will be and again take care guys and hope you or take care sorry and hope you enjoy the rest of your day take it easy